welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni Young and today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this pretty landscape. We're going to be working on a 12 by 16 primed canvas. I'm going to be starting off with this blending brush. It's a round and it's number 25. Here are some of the colors that we're going to be using today and if you miss anything don't worry look below in the description everything will be there in a full list for you. You're going to need white, neon pink, neon yellow, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue or cobalt, sap green or hooker's green. If I decide to add any other colors I'll be sure to add them below in the description. So if you're ready come along and paint with me. Let's get started. Okay so without getting my brush wet I'm going to take white with a bit of yellow and a little bit of my neon pink. I want to blend these colors to make a very soft pretty coral or peach. I'm doing just scoops and little crisscross with my brush. This will leave little areas showing and kind of look like there's some clouds back there. I'm going to go right down here at the bottom where we're going to have some water and just incorporate a little bit of this color up here down below. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow and my white and I'm going to tap it lightly up here. Take a little bit more of my white, tap and pull and flick. This will be the first layer and base for our sun rays that are going to be coming down. So again, a little bit more. We're going to be building up foliage and stuff all around the side here. Um, and then we'll add some more layers after. So without washing my brush off, the next color I'm going to take is sap green. So it's going to mix in with the other colors on my brush and make sort of a smoky green color. So I'm going to start pushing and tapping up on the top. Kind of just making it kind of fuzzy and blurry right here. I'm going to pull in and scoop down here. Now I'm just going to tap lightly and then I'm going to come in on the other side. Now I'm going to twist my brush around to get any of the paint that might be left all around my brush and incorporate that. Pick up a little bit more now. Create soft little circles. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush just to work out the last little bit of paint. And I'm going to come right down here on the bottom. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here. And I'm going to come down on the bottom and start pulling. I'm going to pull up my canvas just slightly right up here so I can get the very bottom of it. these sides right here. Okay, so I think I'm actually done with this brush so I can switch over to another mop brush. I'll just show you guys a few of my brushes that I have here. I've got them in this spinny little thing with a pretty crystal top because you guys know I like pretty things. But I've got a lot of these mop type brushes. They're very, very handy to have, a few different sizes. This is the one I'm going to be using right now. It's quite a bit smaller for the size of bushes and trees and foliage that I'm going to be creating right now. This is the best size for me. So I'm going to take, oh, you know what color I forgot to put out was my phthalo blue. I need some phthalo blue. 
So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of this. Try to get just a little bit there. And because I want this to, to look kind of soft and toned, I'm going to take a little bit of my white with that and a little bit of sap green, a little bit more white. So you'll see the color better as I apply it here. So I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to tap. Look how awesome that is just by pushing. So pushing to make it kind of squished and flat and that will give me those nice branches and, and bushes that I want to create. And then when I want it to be a little bit more round, I can do something sort of like that. So I'm going to leave a few spaces here. And then I'm going to make it a little bit thicker in this area. And I'm going to start to soften my brush, small circles. I'm going to pull down below in the water. still got a hint of that color there but if we go over it and want to add a little bit more we can always do that too. I'm just going to take a little bit of my white now. My brush still has what's left of the blue on there and I'm just going to start tapping in to make some lighter tones now. Get all sorts of layers in here. color and foliage but it's back in the distance you can just make it blurry twist your brush around and then I'm gonna bring it down and scoop scoop down here again I've got another one here dry and I'm just gonna soften Make this look a little bit blurry but it's set into the canvas enough now that I don't have to worry about um, making it it's not gonna look like this it's gonna have a little bit more shape and detail but this is really helping to make it look back in the distance it's setting it back and I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna actually just pull this out gently again go across Take a little bit of white, pull, and then go straight down. And very lightly pull across to make it look blurry like water. Now if you have too much water on your brush, it's gonna start to run, and mine is. I have a little bit too much water on my brush, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna use this num number 12 flat brush. I don't have any water on it. I'm gonna lightly just pull the excess water off of there. Now we're gonna do some more layers in here. So I'm not worried about losing, that was just one little brush stroke. I wanted to show you guys one technique for creating water. And I'm gonna go into, let's see, there's a few different things we could do right now. I'm just gonna soften this, this up a little bit more. liner brush and start making some skinny tree trunks and branches. I've had this one for a really long time. It's a Donna Dewberry brush and one of my favorite brands of brushes. This might be my top favorite. They're getting harder and harder to find but I see that she's got videos on YouTube now. Um, she's an amazing, well she does toll painting. It's completely different than this but her brushes and her techniques are really really good. So I'm going to take some water, I'm going to take ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. So this is going to make a nice deep, dark, rich color. 
Instead of using black, I like to make rich colors that are very dark, but black can be a little bit boring, so I recommend experimenting. So I'm just gonna pull, so I've got my brush turned this way, pulling, barely touching the canvas. And the shakier you are, I just had a cup of coffee, so I'm always a little bit jittery after my coffee, but it sometimes helps me make the best trees. So I'm gonna just come in, make it a little bit lower. I'm just gonna tap, tap around here. You can look like it's kind of just nestled in there. Bring it right up past the canvas. Right off the top. Okay, and then we'll bring another one up here. And so I'm pulling some of the other wet paint off of the canvas, making a nice, really nice little tone in there, softer tone. So we've got a bit of both. We've got that dark color and then we've got a little bit of a natural highlight there. Okay, so maybe we'll put something right faintly here, so we pick up a little bit of water. A little something there. Okay, so I think I've got a little tiny mop brush. And I'm gonna take some of my sap green with my phthalo blue. A little bit of white again. A little bit more of that sap green actually. More white. I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to make light little taps. Just do a few little things like this. You can make it a little bit darker inside if you want, give it a bit more of a shadow in there. tree too and just phthalo and green and then we'll have some here in the foreground oh there's my heater kicking in I'm just gonna go shut that off sorry guys looking. I may soften it up a little bit in between as this paint sets in. It's looking a little bit dark. So I've got a clean mop brush. Another one here. I'm going to take a little bit of white and yellow. Just tap lightly. This is going to look really pretty. We're going to start adding some light in here. So I'm going to come right back here. Feel like there's some light on the other side of this bank. Okay, I'm 
going to take a little bit of a little bit of white dry brush and soften in here. Get these sides a little bit. Okay, this is wet up here. I'm just going to brush that off. I'm going to take a hair dryer. I'm going to dry this area off and then come in with some more layers. Okay, I've got a little flat brush here. And I'm going to take some yellow and white with a bit of water. I'm going to start at the top. We're going to pull and flick. Now if it doesn't show up, then we need a bit more white. I've actually got a little bit of neon orange here. I'm going to use some of this with my white. You can make a peachy color with these three colors, but it's not going to be the same. Add some down here. We're gonna have, I think we'll have a little waterfall. A little waterfalls back here where this is coming from. I'm gonna pull lightly. I'm going to take a bit, same brush, I haven't washed it off, but a burnt sienna with my sap green. And I'm going to come right in here and make some areas here that's going to be closer to us in the foreground and a little bit darker. Pick up a little bit of my neon orange and add this to the bank. I'm just going to scumble gently all of those colors right out of my brush. Bringing it up a little bit higher and gently mixing it in. To the blue. I'm going to get a bit of water on my brush and without washing it I just picked up a little bit of water. I'm going to take some of this, stir it up a little bit first. And then I'm going to leave a little space, okay? So I'm going to leave a little space like this for the sand or whatever. I'm going to go across and flick down. So if there's not enough paint, it's not gonna show up. So I just picked up a little bit more of those, that dark color that I made. And I'm gonna pull and flick. So to create those reflections in the water, you wanna pull in both directions. So it gives you that sort of blurry reflective look. I'm going to clean my brush off, come 
back for some white and some yellow. And I'm going to come right close here, line my brush up, start scumbling in. And then I'm going to make it a little bit wider right in here. Do that again with a little bit more paint. I want it to feel like it's sort of sloping. Okay, and then I'm going to take some yellow, neon yellow, and I'm going to start adding, kind of tapping and wiggling and scumbling all at the same time. This is going to create a little of a filter here and then I'll come over and add a bit of a highlight to that later on. I'm going to add a little bit more green in here. See how fun it is just to add, add a little filter like this. There's a few different ways of using um, neon paints. So add a little bit, a little hint of it right in there. Go back to my flat brush, my larger one, and I'm gonna take. Let's see. Let's get a little bold and fun with color. Neon pink and phthalo blue. Take a bit of white with that, just to soften it a little bit. Get a beautiful violet color or lilac. Very pretty shade of purple. And let's add some. Right across here, I'm gonna take a bit more white. A bit more white so it doesn't look too muddy. It's okay if you get a few muddy tones in there. And then I'm gonna pull and drop down. Across again. ripples in here. And then I think in here I want to have um, a background smoky purpley color, a layer of this I'm going to add. So we're just going to push with our brush flat and start layering in there because I just think that's really pretty. I kind of just decide these things mid-process. I don't plan it ahead of time. I think that is what kind of makes my channel a little bit different too. And all us YouTubers have something different to share with you guys and to teach you. Um, but you get to see my painting kind of in the raw, see how I go about making my decisions when I do. You don't really know. This isn't really pre-planned at all. Bring back my little tree trunk here. But see how this looks kind of smoky? I like that. We get a light layer and filter of fog or mist. Okay, I'm going to take that purple color I made again. And I'm going to add a little bit more right in here. right below the, the bank. Make that stand out a little bit more. And then using the corner of my brush, so I'm just using this corner right here or the other one to tap in a little bit more color. Okay, so for my waterfall, I think I want to use this uh, Wisp Filbert brush. And I'm going to begin first with some of that blue, pink, and ultramarine blue. I have to get them a little bit darker, or lighter I mean. 
but it does need to be darker first so that the waterfall shows up. So this is the area I want it to be and I'm just going to come over with my dark first. So just a little section there. take a little bit of white and pull so you get those little lines in there so because it's far away it's going to be a little bit blurry right so we're not going to worry too much about all the details I'm going to have it kind of just look like it's spilling right in right into this pretty river. And we'll add a little bit more white on our brush. I just like all the little lines it creates. I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and my yellow again. Do some soft little taps in here. Soften with my finger. So we get the feeling and sensation that there's some foliage on either side. this brush to make some little tree branches. I'm going to get my light purple color again and I'm going to come down and just do all these light little scoops. Light little scoops. Just to look like some trees back there. It'll dry a little bit darker. You see how pretty the color looks over top. some rocks in here. Take a little bit more of my way. Soften this a little bit. I'll come in with a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to go right under here. Kind of bring it up. Reverse scoop. A little bit of neon orange. Pull a little bit into the side there. Wiggle some of this off. And 
some down below. I'm going to do my brush now. Back to my small fill or flat brush, sorry. make soft little scoopy slants like this to give it some a little bit more of a slope set that back there. Actually before I do that I just want to do a few little tree branches. So I'm going to take my purple color again that I made. We will have a tree that goes in the distance. Way back there. It goes all the way up past the campus. too. I turn my liner brush on the side and drag and pull down like that. I'm just going to do a few little squiggles here. For a few branches. And I'm just going to add a little bit of what's left over from that purple in my brush. Before I finish off that tree, I'm going to take some more of my light purple color and back and forth, just incorporating some of that pretty color in there. And add a little bit more. Because when it dries, I really want it to show up. I don't want it to look darker. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of my white and my pink. pink to this tree trunk here, just a, little, a thin little layer, because you know I like to play up on color, right guys? So I kind of initially come in with a few colors at the beginning and then I start enhancing with some more. I'm going to take a little bit of sap green on with my phthalo. I'm going to start pulling where my next tree is going to be. I'm not forgetting about these ones. I'm going to get to those in a second. Stay with me guys. Sometimes I tend to hop around a little bit. Okay, 
so I'll leave it like that for now. And we'll get back to those trees. So I'm gonna use a filter brush. I think this might be a cat's tongue brush, but I really wanna use it for my treetops. So I'm gonna take that color again, the purple that I made. Okay, and I'm just gonna start tapping lightly. These aren't those typical trees that go pointy and smaller at the top and down to the bottom. These are different ones. I'm gonna bring this one right up. This is a fun brush. Let's have some more fun with color here while I've got these these colors going on my brush. The phthalo and the pink. Another little layer in here. Let's tuck some right in here too. You know the green, green and purple are complementary, so we know that's gonna look nice there. We can get away with a little bit. Right in here, I'm just going to add phthalo and green. Just a little bit more of a dark shadow right in there. And I'm going to keep using this brush. Phthalo and green, phthalo and green, little bit of white and yellow. And I'm going to push and tap. the tip of the brush just to make some little um, branches, right? Just pull, kind of flick. Maybe there's a little bit of moss or something hanging off, hanging down the side there. You know, there's just all sorts of bits of moss and leaves and Whatever else is growing on your this big old tree. Okay. All right, so a little bit right in here. And the next thing I want to do, a layer of light yellow. I'm going to tone it with a bit of orange. There's some green in my brush still too. So I'm making a little, a little bit muddy, dirty it up a little bit. You know it's going to dry darker. I'm just going to add a little bit of a lighter shade here so it doesn't look, I don't want it to look black when it dries. We need that shadow in the water. So let's come right down here, pull, and just try to do this 
with this same brush. Shadow like that. We have to make it a little bit darker. Just add a little bit more of those colors. shadow. We might need it. Maybe there's another tree living back there. that up very well. Let's just push that off, move it over. So I've got white and yellow on my brush. And I'm going to come in, so I'm just going to tap in, and we're going to bring some light in here. And then maybe just sneak some in here too. Get to the top here. I'm just going to take that same brush. Cat's, cat's tongue brush. I think that's what they call it. And soften that. Right in here, soften a little bit. I'm going to add more white up here where the sun rays are going to be coming from. I'm just do a soft little, soft little flick right now. Get rid of that loose hair. There's a few there actually. And pull and drop for some more reflections here in the water. And I want to make more of that pretty sky color, so I'm taking my yellow, my neon pink. Try and match that. Okay, I want to incorporate more of this color here, so I'm just going to pull. I'm trying to just use the tip of my brush a little bit like this. Pick up a little bit more my pink. See how pretty that looks, all those colors together. Time to work on this area now. So I've still got my brush loaded up, remember, with the phthalo blue and the burnt sienna. And I'm going to start right here, right on the edge. I'm actually going to switch to my other hand and start coming in right here. I know it's scary. Then I'm going to go right down. We're creating foreground, so it can be a little bit scary when you've worked so hard for your background, right? To cover it up. But if you want to achieve this sort of 3D look that makes you feel like, and this perspective that really makes you feel like you're sitting on a little beach, maybe I feel like there's maybe a little, it's a little bay, there's a little beach right here, and we're looking out. We've got a little secret hideaway here, I don't know. Maybe there's a few little rocks here. Okay, and I 
go back to my liner brush and I want to add a few little branches there. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. I'm just using my phthalo and burnt sienna again. Oops. A little bit too much paint on my brush. tree trunk a little bit thicker. Maybe we just have a little, a little bush that lives here. And a few little leaves. Switch over to my tiny little mop brush and well, let's see what color should we take. Maybe some of that yellow with our green. Tap the excess out and let's add a little bit of, little bit of light in here. Okay, I need a little bit more there for it to show up. Back to my cat's tongue brush. And just add a few little leaves and whatever that might be in here. Take a little bit of burnt sienna with our neon pink. Or maybe they're just a little bush that's starting to change color. See, it's really subtle. So this is a dark area here. We're not going to add too much light, but I don't want it to just be a dark, one big mass dark blob. We want to have a little something. Dry off my little mop brush, go back to this one again, and I'm going to take a little bit of white with just a little tint of my light purple, and maybe add a little something in here just to break this up a bit. Something in here. Maybe we could add a, add a little cabin somewhere. That might be fun too. Just gonna blur this up a little bit. Now that this is dry, come over, dry brush and scumball another little layer of um, mist or fog, whatever it is. And as this tree dries, I can go over and do a fine little mist there as well. And I don't think it's totally dry yet. Over here to my 
little waterfall area. Add a little bit more in there. Let's pick up a little bit more of the yellow. Just a little, a little layer of it, so it looks like it kind of starts up here, it's bigger up here in the foreground, right? And then it comes down slowly around the corner there. with a little bit of phthalo bird sienna and add some more leaves. This will also help make that look brighter back there. Bring this up a little bit higher if you want it. I'm going to take white on the corner of my little, this is a tiny little flat brush. I'm just going to add little dabs in the water make it look kind of sparkly. Try to do this really carefully, make it look as small as I can, just little dabs. As we get closer to the foreground, here we can make some larger ones. too big. Some of these are a little bit too big and distracting, so I'm just going to pull carefully and stretch them out. There we go. Build a little bit more shadow up right there. Where should we have a little house? Take my burnt sienna and maybe, maybe right about here, do a little rectangle. Put a little slant here and here. Down. I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna right down here and make this a little bit darker. Same with my roof. And just pull some lines across. We'll just keep it really simple and we don't want it to look like it's kind of just teetering there. We're going to have to make this look like it's set in. Take my mop brush, sap green and some phthalo. bank that it's sitting up on. I'm 
I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow, tip of my brush. And so there's some light coming in there. So let's continue adding a, just a little bit of a highlight here. We're gonna put some of that kind of in front of the house to make it look like that house is a bit more nestled back there, okay? And it doesn't stick out so much. Now if the light is hitting, then maybe what we should do for this to make sense is have some light on the roof. So I'm just going to take a soft peach color, try to rest my pinky somewhere that's dry, and I'm going to pull. My paint is still a little bit wet there, so what I'm going to have to do is possibly wait for that to dry. We're just trying to add this carefully. One layer at a time, making it a little bit thicker. You just do little taps as well. Like that, just for the roof. And a little a little log cabin maybe it's a log cabin let's put a little highlight on that side like that, nothing too fancy. side of the chimney. Some stairs. Just push some of that off. It's all up to you how much detail you want to add. You can do little faint lines to make it look more like a log cabin if you want. You could add some flowers in here. Just a little bit of color. Make it look even more inviting. So with a little bit of neon pink and then a little bit of white just so that it really shows up when it once it dries, right? Just a little bit of color in there. So we could make more of a smoke color smoke should be clear it shouldn't have a color but we need it to show up in this painting i'm just going to do a little bit of ultramarine blue with white a little tap at the base where it's coming out of it's going to be small and then i just kind of smush like this so that you can really see it and then we can add I want to make 
sure that this is gonna show up once it dries. So I'm just adding a little bit more of white in there. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this off and then I'm gonna do some sun rays and then call this painting all done. I'm going to use my number eight flat brush. I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to go into my white area here that's kind of tinted with the pink and the yellow and then we'll see if this shows up. We're going to start from almost the top where it's bright white there and then go all the way down and line it up here. Go right down there. So I'm gonna need some more white for this to show up. Bright white right there. A little bit more water on my brush. enjoyed watching this one today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Um, thanks so much for joining me you guys. I really had fun showing you step by step how to do this today. So I'll see you next time really soon in another video. Stay happy and creative. Bye!